thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I'd like to thank you and uh, the ranking member for again uh, uh, providing us uh, the information and, and a focus on uh, a very significant element to our nation's security. And so thank you both, and uh, I would identify myself certainly with your opening statement. Uh, I am, <clears throat> however, and this uh, panel has not uh, changed uh, my, uh, I don't know if it's observation or my analysis that, um, frankly, our policy toward Iran and the Mullah regime in Iran has been detached from reality and it's baseful, basically wishful thinking of the worst sort. Uh, let me just mention about Russia and how they have uh, armed these, uh, the Mullah regime, this horrible dictatorship, with weapons to shoot planes out of the air and take care of, uh, of that type of military threat. Quite frankly, we, we are not going to invade Iran. I don't see it. Even if they have a bomb, we're not going to invade Iran. Those weapons are aimed at, uh, at preventing some sort of or, or countering a military threat to that regime, which now has a positive relationship with, with Moscow. Uh, that if we are going to get rid of the Mullah regime, it won't be U.S. military personnel with U.S. weapons going in and doing that job. If we're going to get rid and that, and unfortunately, all the talk about that, all the talk about that, and and all the details about every little increment in which the Iranian Mullah regime now is closer to getting a bomb, uh, has taken us away from the real solution, the only solution, which is make sure that we deal with the people of Iran who hate the Mullahs. And you're taking focus away from that by talking about weapon systems and this. We need to make, while, while we let the, the Baluch, who would be in charge of the Straits of Hormuz, I might add, if we could, if we'd support their, uh, their fight against the Mullah regime. The Kurds, there are more Kurds in Iran than there are in Iraq. The Azaris, uh, we have Azerbaijan right next door that's willing to help. But all of this time, and even the Persian element was ready to overthrow the mullahs several years ago in this green revolution, and we let them go without any even verbal support for their effort. Now, getting rid of the mullah regime by helping the people of Iran is the answer. You've got Persians, uh, the MEK, I know, as everybody criticizes them because they have a checkered past. Well, they also, they, they've been willing to help us get rid of the Mullah regime. And they've, been, and they've been struggling for a more democratic government, along with the other Persians who are there. 90% of the Persians don't like it. And like you said, uh, uh, as you expect from a journalist, to focus in on the corruption and the repression that's going on. Well, if we focus on that, that's, why we're, that's how we would mobilize the only real power we have to get rid of them, which is the Iranian people themselves. And uh, one last note about uh, this idea about all this focus on how much heavy water they have, et cetera, et cetera. We gave them $150 billion with this nonsensical uh, uh, treaty that we signed with them. $150 billion were made at their disposal. How much do you think it would cost them to buy a nuclear weapon from Pakistan. It wouldn't cost, I bet it wouldn't even cost a billion. I bet they could get it for, for in, in the tens of millions, if not a hundred million bucks. The fact is, that regime with its hands on, on the you know, military capability of, of nuclear weapons, that is the threat. It's the regime. It's not the weapon itself. So I think we should quit focusing uh, America's attention on things that will not change the, situ the situation and make us any safer. And again, talking about how much uh, heavy water they have, and how are they gonna be able to stop them from building their own bomb. If they want a bomb, now they can afford to buy it. And uh, we have to, the, an the answer is, mullahs have got to go. The mullah regime has to leave, and how we get rid of it is not through American military operations, but instead reaching out to the people of Iran and helping them win their freedom. And that's, and 
If anybody in the panel would like to spend their time refuting that, please go right ahead. How about my, my journalistic friend? Go right ahead. <laughs> well, sir, uh, first off, thank you, thank you for that. Um, I mean, I, I'll be... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, be, uh, I'll be blunt. First off, you know, if it were to come to those types of activities, and, and I, I, I well know your, uh, your biography, I know your experience, um, you would know that the Department of Defense, this is not within, uh, within our wheelhouse, um, so to speak. You know, any outreach towards separatist movements is usually done uh, either uh, clandestinely or through, uh, or through uh, overtly through diplomatic uh, channels. And there have uh, you know, certainly been, uh, been examples where we have, uh, have done that. Um, I think uh, the, uh, with respect to, I will focus on one thing, which is the, uh, the note about the, the dollars that Iran has. First off, you know, Iran always has the, uh, the cash um, on hand if they wanted to you know, purchase a nuclear weapon. I think, and I hate to do this, I'm putting on my, uh, my PhD hat now, um, there's a lot of academic literature and, uh, and a lot of analysis that would suggest that's not a really likely thing. Because if you're the Pakistanis, if you sell a nuclear weapon to somebody, First off, you lose all of the control that you would have on that nuclear weapon, and you'd get all of the blowback if it's, uh, if it's used. So I think that threat, although it's, it's real and it's something that we, we carefully monitor, it's something that contains a lot of risk for anybody that would sell that. Second thing I would say is that when it comes to money and what the Iranians are doing in terms of the asymmetric activities, in terms of these nefarious activities, a lot of these things are really cheap, and they didn't need the money to keep doing this stuff. What they're doing in Yemen, what they're doing in Syria and Iraq, it's not that expensive uh, to, to begin with. And as we've, uh, as we've established, if the Quds Force wants to get a piece of the budget, they're going to get a piece of the budget. Um, they're going to get their way, and thus far they've gotten their way with, uh, with respect to um, to I guess what we call the, uh, the Islamic regime's discretionary spending. Um, but, uh, and I, I don't think that the, the amount of money that was freed up, which is a little less when you look at actually the liquid assets, has had much of an effect on what Qasem Soleimani and his, uh, his lieutenants are, are doing in Iraq and Syria. We go now